Hello, all of you, too. Lamb on his wall, boy, 5699. Welcome back to another video. Actually, welcome to my uh, 2024 QA video. Uh, a couple of days ago, I asked uh, my audi uh, my viewers uh, send me questions uh, about anything about open book, about anything you want to ask this time. I mean, usually when I do a QA, I just talk about. Uh, I said a rules so like no that's about fandoms, belief, religious beliefs, politic views, and stuff like that. But I figured let's just get jump uh, just uh, open doors and just jump into anything. Pretty much ask me whatever you wanted to ask, and some of them are uh, some personal questions, some of them are just regular simple questions. But I figured, hey, why not just jump into asking these questions and I figured hey why not doing that because I got a good questions and it's two days before Comic Con I'm gonna get this uploaded tonight about 10 o'clock it's 8 o'clock right now so hopefully I can get this uploaded in the next two hours and tomorrow I'm gonna do one more update for Northwest Arkansas Comic Con so uh, before I do want to jump into these questions uh, I'm gonna give you the straight scoop and I'm gonna give you my full honest 100% opinions and some of it you may agree with uh, others you may not uh, just all I just ask is just respect my opinion and I will respect yours and that's hopefully that will not turn into drama and I will lose viewers or anything but if you get offended or if I hurt your feelings that's just you're just gonna have to get over because this is just my personal beliefs so I'm gonna give you the 100% straight scoop but without further ado let's jump into the Q&A uh, 2024 edition here we go why did you decide to get a Rhea's Grimmery tattoo? Well, like I said in my uh, videos about wanting to get the tattoo, I have been wanting to get a tattoo for many years, and the question is I had no idea uh, what I wanted to get, who I wanted to get, and I, when I started getting into anime, High School DxD was the very first anime that I pretty much watched all the way through and sat all the way through and got into anime. I watched other animes like Witchblade, Burst Angel, Painting and Stalking. Uh, I'm about to watch an anime called How to Not Summon a Demon Lord or something like that. And one day my we were in the car and my bro dad popped off to my brother asked if he wanted to ever get a Spongebob tattoo because that's what he used to say when he was younger. And it came to my head, I said, hey, I actually know what I want to get a tattoo of, better yet, who, and I decided to get a tattoo of Rhea's Grimmery from High School DxD, and I believe that the tattoo has turned out magnificent. The guy did a fantastic job doing it, as I've said many before, my only complaint is that the tattoo artist was completely uninterested, he was rude and hateful, so I will not go back to them, and I gave him a negative review, and he called me one of those Karen. so pretty much, I would pretty much go to, if you're in the Fort Smith area, I would not recommend going to Southtown, especially, I would recommend going to see White Rabbit, uh, Joe Lynn, over at White Rabbit of Fort Chaffee, but that's just me, like I said, happy with the tattoo, very for uh very rude tattoo artist what is the best and worst opening act you saw at a concert well for the longest time i really believed that my favorite opening act that out of any concert i went to was a band called gfm an all-female screamer rock band that opened up for fozzy and they recently broke up not that long ago and the lead singer madeline rose is doing a lot of uh, solo work and i think she is going to do a tour with fozzy sometime in the future once again but I actually went to go look back at some of the experiences. Say, I personally say my favorite opening act that I saw was a band called Any Given Sand. They opened up for Steel Panther when I saw them at Temple Live Fort Smith the very first time, and they actually blew me the fuck away. They were actually a really, really amazing band. And I usually don't look up art bands of opening acts I've seen until afterwards. But I'm recently, I am a fan of Any Given Sand because they actually blew me away. They're actually going to come back to Fort Smith at Temple Live, opening it up for Blackstone Cherry. So that's going to be really cool. Uh, if I was a fan of Blackstone Cherry, I would definitely go see them. That would have been bonus points. But yeah, personally, personally, when I saw Steel Panther for the first time, the opening act in the game, Any Given Sand blew me away. It's funny because it was their very first time to play in Arkansas. And the singer was like, hey, this is our very first time in Arkansas and we're glad to be here. And usually when somebody famous comes to the Fort Smith, we always say, welcome to the Fort. And that's what I shouted. And the lead singer pointed at me and he said that uh, he felt much more welcome now and he thanked me. So, and I straight up told him, because you know, a lot of those bands afterwards, they go to their merch booth and you can meet them and take pictures and stuff like that. And I straight up said, I have been to many concerts with many opening acts. You guys are by far the best opening act I've seen. And I did get a picture with them. But I actually ended up deleting it before I got home, which that sucked. But honestly, but personally, I, my bullet favorite band is a tie, opening act between is a tie between Any Given Sin and GFN. Uh, the worst opening act I saw was a band uh, called Of Limbo. 
I they opened up the second time I saw Buck Cherry. Uh, this was right uh, in the middle of the pandemic, which was which was back when the mask was mandates and everything. And they were not really good. I don't think they actually made any albums. I think they made like two or three EPs. And they have this really awful song called "Let's Get Fucked Up." It's just a six minute song. And for two and a half minutes, he's just screaming, let's get fucked up as loud as he can. It was just not really good. They actually did a very bad cover of the Beastie Boys Fight for Your Right. Um, the lead singer did not, it seems like a douchebag. So but they're from California. They all dress up like uh, beachgoers, surfers. But personally, worse that probably of Limo when I saw Buck Cherry. They were not a really good opening act. And so, yeah, they were pretty much the, probably the worst opening act I've seen. That's my opinion. Do you have a Blue's Clues shirt? As a matter of fact, I actually did. I actually do. I actually did an, uh, an unpackaged video not that long ago. And I actually have the shirt right here. Blue's Clues. Uh, call, it's it's under the hot topic of Blue's Clues college shirt. I actually bought this shirt because my mom recommended that I should wear a Blue's Clues shirt when I go meet Steve Burns at the Missouri Comic Con. So I'm definitely going to wear this the first day when I go meet him and do the photo op with him. Um... But yeah, this is the only Blue's Clues shirt I have right now. Uh, and I'm debating if I want to get a autograph of just a picture and frame it. Or if he should sign this. This is the original notebook flying uh, from Flying Colors from 1998. I'm debating if, he want, if I should let him sign this. I have this. I've had this for a couple years now. I actually... If you... Try to buy this online like eBay or Amazon. They are asking for outrageous prices. I don't know if it's out of date or not. But I actually got lucky with mine and found one of these on Amazon for about 10 bucks. So I kind of got lucky. I do have the crown right here, but the crown that came with the um, notebook broke. Uh, but actually, believe it or not, this was actually unopened. I actually still have the packaging in it. It's just in my brother's closet. And that's a mess. But this is the original notebook, Flying Colors, which I'm debating if he should, if I should just get a signed paper. They actually have a sort of uh, certification uh, team that's going to be there where you can buy and you can get the authenticity. But I'm debating if I want to get that or I so I should get the um, uh, a picture and frame it like I do with Billy West and Napoleon Dynamite because I lost. I don't know where my P Nintendo 64 copy uh, signed by Charles Bay. But I'm debating if I want to do this or just sign that uh, my notebook that I have. And, but yes, to answer your question, yes, I do have the Blue's Clue shirt right here and I plan on buying more. I don't know if I'm going to get a Steve shirt or not. Who knows? We'll just have to see in the future. Do you like the Hot Topic store? As a matter of fact, yes, yes, I really do. That's pretty much where I get all my graphic tees at. That or Spencer's. I know when I originally, when I started making my own money from jobs and everything, I would always go grab shirts from Hot Topic. I used to have a shit ton of of Hot Topic shirts along with the stuff with Spencer's. I am a fan of both Hot Topic and Spencer's. Both, those are my go-to stores when I buy shirts because you can get them for about 20, 25 bucks. And sometimes they'll have a deal where you buy one, get one half off, or buy two, get one th free. But, um, but yeah, I do like Hot Topic shirts. I do have plenty of shirts. I actually had a, 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 a like, a, like three baskets full of Hot Topic shirts and that's what I would just spend my money on is just Hot Topic shirts and Spencer's shirt. I know many times where I bought, uh, I have, Hex Girl shirts I bought from Hot Topic. I bought the Blues Clue shirt I bought from Hot Topic. I have System of a Down shirts I bought from Hot Topic. Foo Fighters shirts from Hot Topic. That's pretty much where I got my shirts. And if, for my pants, I usually shop at Buckle. I never bought any pants from Hot Topic because I never was a fan of anything. And when my credit was really, really good, I applied for a Hot Topic uh, credit card, which I got approved for $400. So I went when I got the card... Uh, me and my mom did a shopping spree, a hot topic. I pretty much spent about two hundred and seventy-five dollars with that card. I did use it all. I bought a bunch of other stuff, like I bought that Hasune Miku poster. I bought many stuff online, you know, shirts and stuff like that. And a lot of some of the shirts on Hot Topic website you can buy just on that website. And sometimes I'll have stores like I bought many Hasune Miku post uh, um, shirts. Like I said, it's pretty much Hot Topic and Spencer's already which my go-to shirt. Very, very. Sometimes I'll go to uh, Buckle and buy a shirt, but I I never bought a shirt from Abercrombie or Aeropostale and stuff like that. I also checked out the Hot Topic stores and at the Promenade and Rogers and Tulsa and pretty much have the same stuff. But yeah, I am a fan of Hot Topic and a fan of Spencer's to answer your question. But yeah, what's the furthest you ever went with a girl?
Okay, so I got a couple of stories I'm going to do real quick. When I was in high school, nobody liked me, and I didn't like anybody. And, of course, every girl that was pretty much attracted, I thought was attractive in high school, had boyfriends or was engaged for whatever reason. Uh, but I didn't have any uh, action, if you would say, till college. I remember the first ever experience I had, I made out with a uh, girl at a festival, at a theater festival, when I went down to Henderson State Un Henderson University in Arkadelphia. And uh, we talked about it, and she asked, and she and I asked her, "Hey, you want to make out?" It was a kind of like a truth or dare thing. Well, she said, popped off about how she was tired. I said, "Hey, you want to make out? That might wake you up." And so we made out for about 15 ish seconds. That was probably very, very amazing. And of course, we a couple times did some thub, nothing too crazy. And then that second semester, about January, I think it was about six years ago. That's crazy that that's happened. About six years ago, when I was a uh, second semester in college, I was in a play called Under Milkwood, which actually that's the last play I've been in in there. So people have been six years since I've done acting stuff, but it's been anyway. This girl. I started talking to her and her friends like, yeah, she definitely likes you. You should really ask around. So we talked one night. I gave her my number. And during school, because this was back when I would do go to my classes and then I would have the, and then I would have the theater practice or rehearsals. And about rehearse, I would be done with classes about, about 2, 2.30 and I would not have my rehearsals till about 5, 5.30 that night. So I had a couple hours to kill. And I usually go to the library or the 24-hour section and play games on the computer or do work on something. She asked me one day, or that day to help her move a bed, so I went over to the dorms. I didn't live on campus, but she did, and uh, she did not uh, wasn't there. So, and so she texted me a couple about forty five minutes before rehearsal. She goes, "Hey, what you doing?" I said, "Uh, uh just waiting for rehearsal to start." She goes, "What are you doing after?" I said, "Probably going home." She asked me to hang out, hang out in her dorm. And I said, "Yeah, we'll definitely do that." And uh, my dad said I can hang out for probably about an hour or something after rehearsal. So, uh, usually rehearsals end, ended at ten o'clock, and you know my dad would pick me up at eleven. But actually, some so for some reason, of course, that night I got lucky because rehearsals ended at 8.30 that night. So we, she invited me over. Uh, we did some cuddling. She kissed. We made out. She did some stuff. I did some stuff to her. She did some stuff to me. I did some stuff to her. And then she said, you know, I don't think a relationship would be a good idea because she was a different race. She was a different race from what I was. But she said we can definitely be friends with benefits. Uh, but come to find out that that... Like three days later, she told me she ended up getting a boyfriend, and I was definitely not happy about that. I did end up doing it for the first time on my 19th birthday, and I answered the question, yes, it was protected. Thumbs up for that, and I probably shouldn't be saying it because it's too early. I did have a girl from work and my with me in my bed a couple of days ago. Probably That's all I'm going to say just in case something, if something happens, I'm going to edit this part out. But yes, I have had some many, many experiences, but I didn't start doing that till adulthood. So, I hope not like everybody else who brags about losing their virginity at 12 years old, which I don't know, that's something you shouldn't be bragging about, but that's just me. What's the craziest thing that has happened at a concert you attended? Okay, believe it or not, nothing too crazy has happened to concerts. You know, every concert I've been to was a rock concert. I have seen Nickelback twice. I've seen Steel Panther twice. I've seen Buck Cherry three times. I saw uh, Hinder when I was 12 years old. I saw Fozzie, Chris Jericho's band, and nothing too crazy. I think the earliest nothing too crazy but the first time i saw steel panther they have a thing about halfway through their show they'll bring a girl on stage and they'll sing a special song to them and then they'll invite pretty much any girl that wanted to get on stage they could or like any girl who wants to get on stage girls only can get on stage and everybody and somebody did that they, of course every girl pretty much girls got on stage nothing not too many and not too many attractive to be honest but when they jumped into the first song with the girls some guy probably about 30, 35, jumped up, took off his shirt, and pretending he was a, a girl, I don't know if he was drunk or something, he got his ass thrown off the fucking stage, of course, security had to jump up, luckily, Steel Panther didn't acknowledge him at all, so that was really good, really good, and then, the very first fight that I've actually seen was at Fozzie, at Temple Live, and there was three opening acts, you know, Nocturnal, Noctur Nocturnal Affair, uh, Crash Karma, and GFM, uh, the first opening act was nocturnal affair and as soon as they got off stage there's already a little bit of drama going on about these two drunk people about my age uh starting shit about they shoved a kid down it was probably about eight or nine and so they weren't happy about that and there's bragging oh we're in the pit we can do whatever the fuck we want they're screaming in my ear luckily my brother i only went for my brother because my brother is a fuzzy fan and he's wrestling he likes chris jericho but he, they're screaming in our ear and when Crash Karma came out, they actually came into the pen and started chanting and stuff. And I kid you not, not even the second song of the op second opening act, those two drunk people got into a fight. Like, it was from right here 
and I was right there, and the fight happened right where my Reyes Grimory pillow is. And luckily, my brother, he's he's five years old, younger than me, but people think he's an older brother because he's 6'2", 200 pounds. He grabs me and throws him me behind him so I don't get hurt or anything. Luckily, security came in, and I don't know what happened afterwards. But, like, they were already drunk, and a fight broke out before the main event happened. So that was fucking crazy. I was a little shook up about it, but like I said, my brother was there to protect me. So that was really good. But other than that, just a little less of a fight and some dumbasses jumping on stage were not supposed to. What made you do YouTube in the first place? So I've talked about it many of times. The main reason I opened up a YouTube channel because I was living in a very bad life. I think I was about 11, 12 years old. And I was in sixth grade. And I was bullied constantly. Everybody hated me. Uh... It was just a shit show. Many people saw me as a problem child for some reason. The town I lived in over in Oklahoma still thought we were, we were just for, even to this day, they still st think they're stuck in 1955 for whatever reason. They think people with special needs or problem children only need ass whoopers and stuff like that. And I, t I was addicted to YouTube for a while watching videos and stuff like that. And I begged my mom, said, I just want to YouTube video, make a YouTube account so I can just comment on videos and maybe make a friend or two I can talk to on a daily basis. Because this was in the library. And I didn't have a computer at home. I didn't have a phone. And this was before phones. You could upload YouTube videos through your phone and all that. So she talked and you know we lied about my age. That I was 25. Which I'm about to be 25 believe it or not. But I've made a many friends on YouTube. I've seen uh, some of them are still here. Uh, some of them are still here. Some of them I talk to every now and then. Some of them are gone. Haven't been active since 2012. Uh, some of them I still talk to off and on. Like I think my longest friend I've had on YouTube would be Jack the Mutt. Well, he does. He doesn't go by Jack the Mutt anymore, but a dubstep artist that I've known. And it'll be ten years since we've known each other. So we've known each other for ten years, and hopefully one of these days he would come. He would get popular with his dubstep and come over here to the United States, and we would be able to meet and hang out and stuff like that. But yeah, I and and then one day somebody convinced me that I should make a YouTube video or something. I made my first video back in March of 2012. I think I made two videos. It was just a lame introduction video of me singing a stupid song, and then I disappeared for a little bit. I think I disappeared from 2012 up until early 2014, because like I said, I didn't have a phone, I didn't have a computer at home, I didn't have an iPad, I didn't have a tablet, I didn't have nothing. And then I started uploading videos in February 2014. I was stuck in a, th a therapeutic day treatment where I was not in public school. And I had a lot of time on my hands because I was at home. If I was not there, I was at home doing nothing. And then my mom gave me a, a tablet for Christmas. And I started making videos and all that. I started making videos for the first time in early 2014 and 2015. A lot of the earlier videos I made were dumb and stupid. So a lot of them were taken down or privately and as I evolved to an adult and later high school and all that, I've tried to try to do better videos and stuff like that, help become a better person, better editor and stuff like that. So I started, I originally made a YouTube video, uh, YouTube account just to comment and make a couple of friends. I disappeared for a little bit and then here we are 10 years, uh, 13 years later since I've had an account and going on 10 years since I made YouTube videos, hopefully one day. Uh, I will be able to make a living. I'm part of the partner program. I'm $85 in my AdSense account, so I just need $15 more and I can take that 100 out. So thumbs up for that. Have you ever been to Disneyland or Universal Studios? I have actually have been both to Universal Studios and Disneyland. Uh, back in 2014 when my dad was working at Mars Pet Care, it was a good paying job. He was making good money. He was able to take out loans every so often. And July of 2014, we got to go to Florida, Pensacola Beach, and then we got to go to Universal Studios in Orlando, wasn't able to, go, didn't go to Disney World over there. Uh, we did went to Sea World over there in Orlando. Was not a fan of Sea World. I loved Universal Studios to death. I loved, I loved everything about Universal Studios. And then in 2016, uh, we went to California. We got to go to Knott's Berry Farm and Disneyland. We didn't get to go to Universal Studios there in or in, in uh, California. We didn't get to go to Magic Kingdom. I think we went to Knott's Berry Farm and we went to Hollywood and then we went to Disneyland. So that was really cool. Disneyland. It was during spring when we were spring break here in Arkansas. We went on spring break. We went to spring. It was also spring break over there in California, and Disneyland cost a fucking fortune. You had to park in this area. You had to get on a shuttle bus to get to the park. Most places you would park and then go to the theme park. Uh, and then it was just an arm and leg to get in, uh, food was not really great. Of course, the some of the characters barely interacted with you, they would be walking to whatever they're going, some of them would not even acknowledge you and all that. I think probably the one who interacted the most was 
Princess Tiana from Princess and the Frog, and then the vi I can't remember the villain, but it was the villain from Princess and the, uh, the Frog, and he was just absolutely incredible. And there's a picture of us. I got to meet Mickey Mouse, Minnie Mouse, and got to meet Pluto and everything. And um, funny story, my I went with my sister to meet Princess Tiana because that was over there in the New Orleans area. And my sister wanted to take a picture, and I had my phone. I said, yeah, I'll take a picture. Of course, my phone was acting up at the time, so I was getting agitated and agitated. And Princess Tiana goes, what is that you got there? And I said, it's a piece of junk. And everybody freaked out when I told them that story because they thought I was calling Princess Tiana a piece of junk. I said, I was talking about my phone because my phone was a piece of shit at the time. I didn't want to tell Pian Princess Tiana that my phone was a piece of shit. So I said, it's a piece of junk. You want it, have it. But, yeah, I have been both to Universal Studios in Florida and I've been to Disney. I think I didn't meet too many characters in Universal Studios. I did get to meet, did a picture with Crusty the Clown and Slideshow Bob. My dad and brother, my dad and brother got to meet Marge Simpson and Homer Simpson. My dad got to meet the Mary Monroe and Betty Boop. While we were stuck in a line for Hollywood Rip Ride and Rock and didn't get to ride it because right before we got on, it got stuck. So we just dodged the bullet with that. So. Has it been hard for you to get employed anywhere near where you live within the past or present due to your disability or are you no longer struggling with being unemployed? It has been a struggle, but luckily I've had the same job I've had for a year and a half now and I work with fantastic people. I work with such a great crew. The only complaint is sometimes I deal with household customers and corporate just makes it really miserable sometimes. But when I lost my job, when I quit my job at the golf shop in early 2019, uh, I try to apply to do some jobs. I applied to uh, retail stores and movie theaters and stuff like that. Uh, I never had a single phone call or email saying come in for an interview. Every email I've got was a day later saying we are not moving your application forward and stuff like that. And then I, I took a break from that because COVID happened and everything was shut down and stuff like that. And this was back when I was asking for money, help, and everything. And this was back when Trilogy Media's fans were harassing me and stuff like that. And then one day I was at the mall walking around. There was a um, hiring at the Dippin' Dots in the mall. And then I went to, to I filled an application for Dippin' Dots. And I filled out an application for Shoe Department Encore, but it's in the mall. I think a day later I missed a phone call. But luckily I called them right back. And it was a, the store manager for the Shoe Department. And she asked me to come in for an interview uh, Friday. That Friday. It was Wednesday and it was that Friday. I said, yeah, I will be there whenever you need me. And so we came in. She came. Uh, we, I went there Friday morning and then had the interview. It was my very first ever time doing an interview. So I was a little bit nervous. But luckily she had a, uh, a son that's nonverbal autistic. So she understand really, really well. And uh, she's like, well, we can get you started on Monday. And if you had any, any, if you need a time off from here and there, just let me know. And before I walked out the door, I said, just to double check and confirm, I did get the job. She said, yes, you did get the job. You will see you Monday. I said, awesome. And so I was extremely happy. That was the only time I ever had an interview and got hired on the spot. So when I lost that job a year later, when I had the interview, I had high hopes. I would get interviewed and then I would get hired on the spot because that very first interview I did with Shoot Department was the very first interview I ever did. She hired me on the spot. So I had that thing in the back of my head. Oh, I got a job interview. Maybe I'll get lucky and I will get hired on the spot. But after I lost my job, I feel that for every store in that mall uh francesca's journeys buckle romance in the stone hot top expensers i think a couple of them emailed me back or called me back i had an interview with journeys and buckle and everything they're like well we'll let you know in a few days a few days later i called they're like oh yeah we're not moving to forward so i'm just like and so i was getting agitated and agitated because the month of giving an interview and not getting hired on I'm like nobody wants to hire me because of my disability people are like well why don't you just contact this and they'll get your job i said i don't want a company to give me a job i want to earn the job and it just got down to say okay i gotta work in this shithole town so the store manager for casey's in the town i live in uh gave me a job right then and there and i've been there for about a year and a half and it's been ups and downs but i work with such a great crew have you ever felt danger at any job you worked at no not really i mean i've got cussed out a couple times i got called dumb and stuff like that i've got threatened a couple times but never had to worry about my life being in danger especially now working in a small town and uh, I actually have seen people shoplift at the store I worked in in the mall. Uh, we didn't know till afterwards, but we actually seen people get caught shoplifting and bolted out the door. Uh, I've seen some of my coworkers get cussed out. I've seen people get screamed at, get thrown, uh, tell me stories about stern stuff. The only time I ever felt threatened 
at work was these people from Illinois that came into the into the into the into the, into the gas station I worked at, and you know he, this big fat guy accused me of laughing at his friend for having a seizure, and I don't remember laughing at all. And he threatened me as he was walking out the door that he was gonna punch my ass and stuff like that. So I just told him to go away and stuff like that. And they, that one of the police officers that live in the town, he still looks out for them. Bless his heart. I said, you know, don't worry about that anymore. They're back in Illinois probably back in Illinois, because that was almost a year ago, but when that happened, I was freaking furious, I threw my keys down, I said, I, it is not worth it through this fucking house, so, you know, I talked to my mom, and I talked to uh, my store manager, who's really good to be in the system manager, and we talked things down, and calmed things down, and stuff like that, so, violate, I've never been harassed, I've never been injured, or stuff like that, so luckily, I've been, you know, just, you know, cussed out, and stuff like that, but I always tell them, have a good day, you're done. Who do you plan on voting in the 2024 presidential election? Honestly, at this point, I'm probably going to vote for anybody who's not fucking Joe Biden. This is probably where I'm going to lose a couple followers and a couple people who's going to disagree with me, but just hear me out. I do not like Joe Biden. I personally think he is the worst president in U.S. history. I, th I thought Obama was the, probably the worst president of the time. And then we get Joe Biden, next thing you know, gas prices is high, inflation's high, groceries are egg cartons or 10 bucks a carton, and just, it's just, it's getting worse and worse and worse. And I saw this coming before he got, before he won the damn election in 2020. Yes, I will admit, I got voted for the first time in 2020. Who did I vote for? I voted for Donald Trump because, yes, people like saying, oh, he's racist, you know, homophobic, and, you know, uh, a bully and everything. Yes, some of that's true, but he knows how to run a country. He can finish, He can speak in full sentences. And honestly, if it comes down to Joe Biden and Donald Trump again, I'm going to Donald Trump. I, I, I mean, I don't know any I don't, I don't know any other presidential. It's probably going to come down to them two again. And personally, if you ask me, yes, I do believe that the 2020 election was rigged because some of those votes from people who died years ago for whatever reason. So, personally, if you ask me, I think, personally, I'm probably going to end up voting for uh, either Nikki Haley or Joe, uh, not Joe Biden, Donald Trump. If it comes down to one of those two. And I've had people ask me if, I've, if I'm a Republican. And I said, no, I consider me independent because I have believed that there have been some Democrats who have done fantastic stuff. And I personally believe there are some Republicans that have done some good stuff as well. Problem is they bring, back, they bring in the dumbasses. Now, I'm not saying Donald Trump is a fantastic president by all means, but I'd rather have him over the president we have now any day. But yeah, at this point, I'm just going to vote for anybody that's not Joe Biden. Are you cool with furries whether they're in the furry fandom or no? Okay, this is going to come to a shock to most people, and let me explain. I would consider myself a closeted furry. I have... When I was in high school, I thought furries were disgusting. I thought they were the worst thing ever made. I despised them. I think everybody in the fandom was disgusting, nasty, awful people. And as I got older, I've seen many talented people in the furry fandom. I've seen many people who have become popular with comics and stuff like that. And I would consider myself a closeted furry. I'm not 100% furry. I don't have a fursona. I don't plan going all the way to Pennsylvania to go to Anthrocon. I don't plan on going to Chicago to go to Anthrocon or whatever furries that is. And if I did, I'm... New to it. I have not admitted to this to anyone. I'm admitting it right now. I'm right now. I am a closeted furry. I don't want people to know too much or people to go crazy about that because I'm still a little bit iffy. I have supported some furry artists on Patreon because I like their comics. Uh, the very first person I did was Kadath. Uh, I thought his comics were absolutely amazing. I loved his characters until I realized his true nature colors that he's a full on Democrat and he's full on entitled douchebag if you don't believe his, uh, if you don't have the same opinions as him. Um, so I took a break from that, and now I'm supporting a guy named Jay Naylor, and I've been supporting him for about a year and a half now, and I think he's a pretty pretty cool guy. You know, I've had some questions, I've gave him ideas, and he's like, yeah, he's all for the ideas, and when every question I've asked him, whether it be, you know, getting a Discord serve, or, or what about this with this character, and he was like, yeah, I can definitely see that, and I plan on doing a little bit about that, so right now I'm a closeted furry. And I'm planning on keeping that that way. So don't go on Twitter. Don't go on YouTube. Wild Boy Five Six Nine Nine is a furry. And if I do, I'm. It's. I. I really don't know. I'm right now. I'm a closeted furry, and I'm just gonna leave it at that. So don't go too crazy about that. All right, guys. That is complete. That is all the questions I have as have as asked. I want to thank everybody who has asked me a question. And I do 
apologize if I said something that, you know, you disagreed with, you did not like, but these are just my personal opinions, and I wanted to give you the full honesty. I wanted to do, I want people to get to know me a little bit more. I know people know about my autism, I know people know about my anxiety and mental health, but I, I never discuss, you know, my beliefs on politics and religion and fandom and stuff like that, because I try to keep that away and try to keep that stuff to myself. Uh, but like I said, you know, I'm new to the anime world, um, I plan on doing some amazing stuff this year, which, you know, you gotta stay tuned for that, but I wanted to do this, just, you know, just ask me whatever the fuck you want, so that is pretty much it, I wanted to stay, sorry if the video turned out to be a very long video, I'm trying to get this uploaded by midnight tonight, and then I'm gonna do one more video tomorrow for an update for Comic Con, because there's a couple of things we're gonna have to discuss and all that, but hope you guys enjoy the video. Uh, if you have any more questions you just want to ask in the comments, feel free and I'll reply to you. Thank you guys a lot for watching. Rate with a thumbs up. Check out my social medias down below. Thank you guys a lot for watching. I'll see you all in a future video. Take it easy.